it's important to be able to create layers, but sometimes you create too many layers and you have to get rid of some, so you end up deleting them. Or you separate content because for whatever editing process you're going through, it's more important to have these elements separate. But then when you're done, you want to merge them back together. And so in this video, we're going to talk about deleting unwanted content and or layers and merging layers back together. And so maybe when I was looking at this project, I was trying to isolate the head um, image because I wanted to put like an outer glow just around the head of the person. But I have this red rectangle. Maybe I put it there for the exact reason that you're seeing on the screen. Maybe I'm doing it so I can actually see where I have artwork and where I don't. And again, I'm just going to use the magic wand tool for now. It could help me um, temporarily find all the active um, areas of the image that I didn't want. I could use the lasso tool to grab big broad areas. I'm on the head layer, so I'm only grabbing the white stuff that you see. And then I could delete that as well. You could also use the refine selection dialog box. And um, I don't want to go into too much detail about it because we are going to cover it in a different lecture. But you could do things like that. Let's say that I put this red rectangle here, not because it's part of the design, but because it's helping me quickly see all the areas that I have little unwanted white spots on my head, my statue head area, and I can delete them. Once you're done, let's, let's pretend that my selection is perfect for now. And if I zoom out really far, it will look perfect. Um, but let's pretend it's perfect for now because we're not going to focus on the selection. We're more so focusing on layer features. Um, you could go back and you could delete the, re the red rectangle layer. I've locked it from the previous video, so I'd have to first unlock it, which is super easy. All you have to do is click on the little lock and it will unlock. And now you could drag and drop or you can just click the trash can and you can delete that layer. And so I could turn the other layers back on and I could decide, well, was I... Did I have that blue orb for a reason? Um, did I want to keep that blue orb? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, if the answer is I didn't want it, you can just unlock it and delete it. Uh, maybe I was experimenting and I wasn't sure. Now, my background copy layer I destroyed. It's a good thing I made a copy and not didn't use the background. But maybe I want to get rid of that one too. I'm going to delete that and say I'm going to make a new copy. And now I have a full image to display behind my head image. And maybe that's okay. Maybe that's the reason I did this. Maybe let's take the eraser tool. And I told you it had a feathered edge. Maybe I'm going to come through here and kind of feather the edge. My brush is too big to do that, though. So let's do a smaller brush. And step backwards until it's... Uh, fully in. I'm just going to kind of go over the edge and kind of soften it. And so if I was to put some sort of outer glow on this, I would be able to put it all the way around the outside of the head and it would sit on top of the background. Um, some other things that you can do to layers are you can adjust the opacity of a layer or the layer blending mode of a layer, or you can add effects to layers. And so I'm going to start with effects even though I covered that last in the lecture because this is where effects might come into play. I've separated an element of the design and I put it on its own layer, but it's kind of still part of the other layers. Like you can't tell there's a difference. And so there should be some sort of need or desire for me to have done this. And maybe it's because I'm going to apply a filter to it. Go to the filter menu, um, go to the filter gallery, make sure that um, you're previewing. And let's see, let's do artistic and color pencil for some reason. Um, when you are, let's hit OK here. When you're doing something like this, maybe I was trying to make it look like um, the head was color pencil and it transitioned to being a real statue. Um, you can combine that with layer effects. So you could come down to the bottom here and choose the FX button and maybe you want to add a bevel and emboss to it, which doesn't look so great. Or maybe you want to do an outer glow, which is kind of my favorite thing. And so you could mess with the settings of that. Maybe we want to make the glow yellow and increase the size and the spread and now it kind of see how I didn't get all the stuff on the edge so you're getting these weird shapes because I didn't refine my selection enough but that's okay for now um, you can increase the size of the glow you can increase the spread of the glow you can lower the opacity on it or you can increase the opacity you can do different things I'm gonna hit cancel 
You could also adjust the opacity. And one of my favorite things to do is to apply an effect that looks crazy like this and then lower the opacity on the layer, either the opacity or the fill opacity. And as you lower it, what you're doing is you're blending the original image that's behind it on the background copy layer with the, the charcoal image. And so right now, I've isolated that change just to be on the head of the sculpture, but I could easily do it as the whole image. I could easily just duplicate the background layer. I could apply, let's turn off this layer here. I could apply that same filter to the background copy. I just use the default color pencil one. And so now the whole image looks funky and weird, right? But if I was to decrease the opacity, it would start to blend the original in with the copy version. And you could even figure out the balance for the statue that you like. So here's nothing, right? And so I can slowly add in some colored pencil or the texture of some colored pencil. But notice I don't really like the background. I kind of think the foreground's pretty cool. Well, you could go back with your eraser tool and on this copy layer with that eraser tool selected, let's make it bigger. I'm going to use my right and left bracket keys to make the brush bigger, and left would be smaller, so right would be bigger. And I could come through and I could paint the sky back in, and it's kind of harsh and, and abrasive right away, but I have a soft edge on my brush. I can also adjust the opacity. And so every time I, I brush a stroke across the sky, I'm not going to be opening up the sky completely. I'm going to slowly kind of bring the sky back in, and as I'm clicking through, I can decide where in the background I want to see more of those clouds. Maybe I don't like this grape area. It's not, I don't, I think this kind of looks really cool, but I think you can tell that there's a weird filter on it on the grapes here and kind of over here on his arm. And so I could kind of click on the grapes to bring some of the original image back. So what I'm doing is I'm erasing, let's increase the opacity, I'm erasing part of the image so it doesn't show through to the next image. And where was it at? Like 50%. And so now I'm combining the two images through opacity. Maybe bring some of that back because I didn't like it. And creating this combined texture. Another thing that I like to do is I like to adjust the layer blending mode. And so I'm going to duplicate this layer again. Notice how I'm not even considering the background layer to be real. To me, it's just a backup and I have it in case I destroy these layers. And so sometimes when you have um, an image, you don't have the right colors that you're looking for, so you do adjustments to it. And one way to kind of mess around with the colors of an image is to mess with this drop-down that says normal. This drop-down are our layer blending modes, and when you select these, they affect the way that the layer that you have selected interacts with the layer beneath it, and potentially the layers beneath that. In this case, background to copy will only interact with the background copy layer because the background copy layer is solid. If the background copy layer was had a tint to it, or um, not a tint, if it was transparent in some way or part of the image has been erased, it would then fall further down and it would interact with the background layer. But you wouldn't see that right now because that layer is turned off, it's not visible. 